Gini coefficient. This is also one of the measure to measure inequality and, uh, and it ranges from 0 to 1. 0 means perfect equality. There is no inequality. So everyone is earning same income. It means that there is no inequality there. One means maximum inequality. In case of Gini coefficient comes out to be one, means that only one person is earning everything and nobody earns anything else. So there is perfect inequality or maximum inequality. Now one thing about Gini coefficient and the other measure is that other measures, if you remember, like for example, mean absolute deviation, coefficient of variation, they were taking the deviations of income from the mean income while Gini coefficient takes the deviation between the pairs of income. So if you have a look at this, so for example, um, I am individual I and you guys are individual J, let's say. So it is taking up the deviations from between the two income levels, right? Not in, not from the mean income. This is the formula for Gini coefficient, 1 upon 2n square mu, summation of i starting from 1 to n, summation of j starting from 1 to n, absolute deviation between the pair of income. Gini coefficient is normalized by dividing the population square, that is n square. There are n square such pairs. Now take up a very simple example. Let us say you have n as the number of individuals. Let's say we have three individuals. Y and YJ are the income levels of individuals I and J, mu is the mean income. So there are three individuals and uh, they are earning what? Person 1 is earning $10, person 2 is earning $20 and person 3 is earning $30. So average income is 10 plus 20 plus 30 upon 3, that is 20. We have found this out, right? Now what we are going to do is we had three pairs of income, 10, 20, and 30. So we'll take the pairwise absolute deviation. Income level 10's deviation from 10, 10's deviation from 20, 10's deviation from 30, and similarly from for 20 and 30. Now what will you do is that you have taken up these absolute uh, deviations between the pairs of income. We will add all of these absolute differences. Once you add all of these differences, you get 80. Now, we will put these values which we have calculated in the formula. So, numerator is the sum of pairwise absolute deviations, which is 80 upon 2 n square. n square is number of individuals are 3. So, 3 square into mu. Mu is average income, which is 20. And this comes out to be 0 0.222. So this is the value of Gini coefficient. So we can also use Lorentz curve to calculate Gini coefficient. So I hope you remember that this is the line of perfect equality. Uh, and this guy is the Lorentz curve. So the distance between the line of perfect equality and Lorentz curve is what A is. And this total distance between the perfect equality line, this total area is a plus b. So Gini coefficient is a upon a plus b. So you can calculate this area upon a plus b. So in case if you have Lorentz curve like this, like this. So in that case what happens, the area between line of perfect equality and this orange Lorentz curve is a dash. It is greater than a and this area is b dash, which is lesser than b, no? So, g dash is a dash upon a dash plus b dash. So, there is more inequality in case of this orange Lorentz curve. Uh, and this is also shown in terms of Gini coefficient because this value is going to be higher than the value of g.